Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill and welcome to my vegetable garden. Do you grow melons in your garden? You know, I live in a zone 5 climate and you would think with our short season there's no way I can grow melons. But actually I've been growing them successfully for years. As a matter of fact, in those two beds last year, I grew cantaloupes and honeydews and I ended up with 42 melons. That is amazing. And if you've never tasted a sun-ripened, fully developed melon rather than one that's harvested early and sold at the grocery stores, you are missing something amazing because they are so succulent, so juicy, and absolutely delicious. So today I'm going to share with you my tips for growing awesome melons. This is the bed I'm going to grow honeydew melons in this year. And a couple of weeks ago, I put about a one inch layer of compost over the surface of the soil. And you know, I don't need to work it in at all. As a matter of fact, I need to avoid doing something like that, such as turning over the soil, because that damages the structure in the soil that earthworms and microbes and insects live in. And so it's very important that I disturb it as little as possible. But one thing I like to do is to use my little spading fork here, and you could certainly use a shovel, but I just put it in a few inches and I just wiggle it back and forth a little bit so that it will be nice and soft for planting. And that's all there is to it. It is so simple and it's way easier on your back to not have to turn all of that soil over. We use a drip irrigation system to water our raised beds. So the next step is for me to put that into place. Another great option would be to use soaker hoses. Both drip irrigation systems and soaker hoses put the water right at the soil surface where the plants can get to it. And that is really important. It's the preferred method rather than using overhead watering. Melons are members of the cucurbit family. And examples of other members are cucumbers, summer and winter squash, and pumpkins. All of these are warm season crops which should be planted after all danger of frost is past. And here in Spokane, that is roughly in mid-May. Now these plants really benefit from having warm soil. And so I have a secret weapon that I use every year that makes all the difference with how well they produce. And that is called plastic mulch. There is red plastic mulch, sometimes called tomato mulch. You may have heard of it. It's pretty easy to find at garden centers. And then there's also solar mulch, and you can find that online. The point is that these mulches increase the temperature of the soil, which makes the plants grow and produce better. And so this definitely makes all the difference. So the next step is for me to cover the surface of the bed with the plastic mulch. For this bed I'm using the solar mulch and it's really important to use some kind of metal pins in order to pin it down so that it doesn't blow off the bed. And these are just galvanized pins that work really great. So now you see why I put the watering system down first before I put the plastic on top. But you're probably wondering, well, how in the world am I going to plant my seedlings? Well, for this three foot by eight foot bed, I'm going to put roughly 12 seedlings into it. And for each seedling, I'm going to cut a little X with some scissors, plant the seedling through it into the soil, press the soil around it, and then just leave the little flaps in the plastic. It'll be just fine. And of course, because the watering system is underneath, the plants are going to get watered. But if you have a watering system that's from above, the water should go across the plastic and down through the slits where you planted each seedling. So it should still work for you, although I would really monitor it early on to make sure the plants are all getting enough water. When it comes to planting melon seeds, you might recall a tip that I shared in one of my seed starting videos earlier this season. And it has to do with the orientation of seeds when you plant them so that you get the best possible germination, which is the sprouting of the seeds. 
So if you look at these melon seeds, you might notice that there is a pointed end and a rounded end. Here's another pointed end and a rounded end. Here's another pointed end and a rounded end. It's a little harder to see on melon seeds because they're smaller than, say, a larger cucurbit seed like squash. But if you think about seeds as being a little packet of energy, and if you plant them in the wrong direction, they use up that energy trying to orient themselves so that they can send a root down and a sprout up. And so by planting these seeds with the pointed end facing down, you'll get the best possible germination. I plant my melon seeds about two weeks before the last frost date, so that would be about the first of May. And I use a pretty good sized container that has room for the roots because even a melon seedling has a pretty good root system in the first two weeks of its life. I plant the seeds into pre-moistened germination mix or seed starting mix, which you can find at garden centers. The seeds get planted one half inch deep. Make sure the soil stays moist. Put it under either a clear plastic lid or inside a clear plastic bag. That will increase the humidity and help the seeds to germinate or sprout. Once the majority of them have germinated, take off that lid or take it out of the plastic bag and put it under a grow light or in a very sunny area. That way the plants will start growing really well. And make sure you keep an eye on the moisture in the soil because that is so important. You don't want the soil to dry out. Once I plant my melon seedlings, I have one more secret weapon that I wanted to share with you. And that is to put hoops over the bed and a sheet of floating row cover on top of those hoops. The purpose of it is to create a greenhouse-like environment where the air temperature is higher and so the little seedlings grow like you would not believe. Now, if you're not familiar with floating row cover, it's a lightweight fabric. You can find it at garden centers and online. It lets in sunlight and moisture, so if it were to rain, it lets that moisture through. And it also increases the temperature of the air, so it's great for season extension at the beginning and the end of the growing season because it gives some frost protection for the plants. As far as organic gardening goes, I use it to protect some plants that are bothered by damaging insects. And when I put it over the plants, it acts as a physical barrier to keep those insects away. But in this case, I'm going for the warmth that it will provide our little melon seedlings. Now, obviously, the flowers on the melon seedlings will need to be pollinated a little bit later. So I only leave this in place for two to three weeks at the most, and then off it comes for the remainder of the season. I have a couple more tips to share with you regarding pruning the vines and also knowing when to pick melons so that they're at their peak of perfection. And believe it or not, somehow I had the foresight last summer to video that for you so that you could see firsthand when to prune, when to pick. Once I have some melons on the vines that are about the size of a small lemon, I like to trim the vines back a bit, and that's because anything that blooms is never going to make it into a nice mature melon by the end of the season. So I just trim them back a bit, being careful not to clip off any developing melons. But that way the plants will devote their energy into ripening the existing melons. Knowing when to harvest melons so that they're at their peak of flavor can seem like a mystery, but there's three things you're looking for. Now, first of all, notice these two melons hanging side by side from the vines. The one on the left is quite green and obviously not ripe. The one on the right has turned a lovely peachy yellow, and that is a great indicator of ripeness. The other thing, which is maybe a little bit difficult to see, but you'll notice that there are some yellow jackets and wasps hovering around the melons. They can smell that sweetness of the flesh. And even though I'm not crazy about this as an indicator, it's telling you that that melon is ripe. 
The third thing you can look at is where the stem of the vine attaches to the melon. And when the melon pulls away from it, you'll see like a little air gap between the attachment and the melon, and that means it's ripe. Now obviously this melon is green, and so it's not ripe, but you can see the stem really well, so that's why I'm showing you this one. So this guy's got a little ways to go. Okay, now you know all of my secrets for growing melons. And if you've never grown them before, I do hope you'll try growing them this year because they are fabulous. Happy gardening.